and all. Uh, let, let's begin with, with the book of Genesis, okay? Um, the book of Genesis, chapter 2, says, It is a day made holy by God himself. I don't think we have any authority to change it. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them, and all of the hosts of them, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctify it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made now you will notice that some of these slides will be kind of awkward you will be thinking, like, why is this connected with what he's saying? Well, I'll try to explain it to you. Because do we believe that God really rested? He doesn't have to rest, right? But he made a point. Because we believe that everything, God, that, everything that is recorded in the scriptures about God's action is for our own benefit. So we can follow in the footsteps of God. Isaiah if you hold back your food on the Sabbath from following your own pursuits on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, if you honor it by not following your ways, then you shall delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. From this passage we see how important it is for God himself that we honor his day. That he has chosen one day when we change what we do and we think of the Lord. That's our concentration. And how do we do it? Through worshiping him. Exodus 20 Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy Six days you shall labor and do all your work But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God on it You shall not do any work neither you nor your son or daughter nor you male or female servant nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Deuteronomy 5. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God I think I've made the point that it is pretty important it was pretty important in the Old Testament and it all obviously should be important for the New Testament for obvious reasons to make the Sabbath holy We'll talk about what is the Sabbath. Is it Saturday or Sunday? And why? The Catechism of the Catholic Church. The celebration of Sunday observes the moral commandment inscribed by nature in the human heart to render to God an outward, visible, public, and regular worship as a sign of his universal beneficence to all. Sunday worship fulfills the moral commandment of the Old Testament, taking up its rhythm and spirit in the weekly celebration of the Creator and Redeemer of his people. What is the most important thing during Sunday? The most important thing is to separate time and make sure that we go to church and attend Mass. That is the core of our faith. No one says you have to do it every single day. No one says you have to do it twice a week. 
but you must do it on Sunday. That's God's command. That's all He wants. That's the minimum we have to fulfill in order to call ourselves even Catholics. The minimum. That's Mass. Sunday Eucharist is necessary to make the day holy and reflect on the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Sunday Eucharist is the foundation and confirmation of all Christian practice. For this reason, the faithful are obliged to participate in the Eucharist on days of obligation. Unless excused for a serious reason, for example, illness, the care of infants, or dispensed by their own pastor. And now, what does it mean by that? You know, I'm, I grew up in Poland, right? Um, and the Catholic Church was a little, I mean, the way we, um, we approach some things was a little bit different. For example, on Sunday, when I lived on the farm, um, during the harvest, sometimes we had a really bad weather. There was no time to gather the harvest. And people, and suddenly, you know, weekend was the only time it was not raining. Saturday and Sunday, um, the forecast predicted that it wouldn't rain. So people would go to the pastor of my little village and ask for dispensation so they could work on Sunday. No one would dare even go into the field without his permission because he is the vicar of Christ and that's God's given law. We don't work on Sunday. So we would go and ask for permission and the permission was granted and then people would go freely after attending mass or he would say a special mass for them but they would go and gather the harvest. Those who deliberately fail in this obligation commit a grave sin. That's the Catechism of the Catholic Church, point, paragraph 2181. Here are some of the occupations, some of the examples of people who have to work on Sunday. Are they dismissed from the obligation? No. They have to seek other ways to attend, unless it's really impossible for them to make the Saturday Vigil Mass. They are obliged to go, even if they work 12 hours a day. You still have the obligation, unless you drive this bus, to go, <laughs> right? Well, these are some of these occupations that prevent us from going to regular Masses. By the way, that is why Saturday Vigil Mass was allowed. In my country, back in Europe, there is still no Saturday Vigil Mass. It's only on Sunday. You have more Masses, but it's only on Sunday. Here it was granted to be able to go on Saturday, and, and everybody thinks that it's just another... No, you should go on Sunday. Unless you cannot go, and I better be a better reason than shopping on Sunday, then you go on Saturday. But we have to make these things straight. We remember, we are looking for the murderer of the sanctity of Sunday. Just as God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done, human life has a rhythm of work and rest. The in institution of the Lord's Day helps everyone enjoy adequate rest and leisure to cultivate their familiar, cultural, social, and religious lives. That's the focus of Sunday. Prayer, spending time with family, cultivation of family life. God, in His great generosity, has given us a special day. He says, because you have a tendency, tendency to be a workaholic, especially in our times, I do too. But I can, you know, get, <laughs> get around it, because I have to kind of work on Sunday. Um, but He says, I will help you. If you, don't, if you cannot help yourself, I will help you. I will make this day for you, in my infinite wisdom, so you can spend your time as you're supposed to, make this day holy. 
as far as you can. Obviously, there are instances where people cannot do it. But as far as you can, it's on your conscience. And one day, we all will have to answer for that, whatever we do. We are supposed to be enjoying God's creation with our family. Isn't it beautiful? That is also the day to go out to nature, to see and appreciate the creation that God has made, everything has made, to contemplate Him through His works, right? That is Sunday. That's why we have it. Why should we rest on Sunday? The Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2172. God's action is the model for human action. If God rested and was refreshed on the seventh day, men too ought to rest and should let others, especially the poor, be refreshed. The Sabbath brings everyday work to a halt and provides a respite. It is a day of pro protest. Protest? Pro how do you say it? Protest. There you go. It is a day of protest. I should know this. I'm from Poland. We protested a lot. <laughs> it is a day of protest against the servitude of work <laughs> and the worship of money. That's what Sunday is. We are protesting against the servitude of work and worship of money because we are supposed to be worshiping a person of God himself. Therefore, no unnecessary work on Sunday. That is unnecessary work on Sunday. Your garage is unnecessary work on Sunday. Cleaning your apartments and your homes and doing your laundry is unnecessary work on Sunday. Saturday is the day to do these things. Dies Domini, the Lord's Day, encyclical letter by John Paul II. Sunday is a way, in a way, becomes a synthesis of the Christian life and a condition for living it well. It is clear, therefore, why the observance of the Lord's Day is so close to the Church's heart and why is the Church disciplined and remains a real obligation. Yet more than as a precept, the observance should be seen as need rising from the depths of Christian life. You have a relationship with God that is vital and vibrant and alive, you will admit it's true. It's coming from the core of your belief. You want to make this day holy. Right. It is crucially important that all the faithful should be convinced that they cannot live their faith or share fully in the life of the Christian community unless they take part regularly in the Sunday Eucharistic Assembly. The Eucharist is the full realization of worship which humanity owns, owes to God. Humanity owes this worship to God. Because without God, we have nothing. We are nothing. We don't even have our personhood. It comes from Him. And this cannot be compared to any other religious experience. Sunday Eucharist. And now I wanted to say something. Sometimes I see people coming to the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel especially after we had Father, I forgot his name, Victor. Victor, there you go. Father Victor here, preaching about the importance of going to the Eucharistic, to the Chapel of Adoration, right? But I see people going there instead of going to Mass. 8 o'clock till 8.30 or 9 o'clock. That is not right. 
you cannot replace mass. There is no comparisons. Eucharistic adoration is an extension of the graces that you receive and the presence of Christ. If you have time to go there from 8 o'clock to 8.30, you should be in the church, not in the chapel. Even though it's a pious practice, a lot of graces, but cannot be compared to Mass. And if you have more time, then after Mass you can go. But it never ever should be replaced. Mass is the first thing, because that's the most important and powerful prayer that a man can offer to God. It's pure worship. Sabbath and Sunday. In the light of this mystery, the S. Domini 18, the meaning of the Old Testament precepts concerning the Lord's Day is recovered perfected and fully revealed in the glory which shines on the face of the risen Christ. We move from the Sabbath to the first day after the Sabbath, from the seventh day to the first day. The Dies Domini becomes the Dies Christi, the day of Christ. Why Sunday? Well, Dies Domini 19. We celebrate Sunday because of the venerable resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do so not only at Easter, but also at each turning of the week. So wrote Pope Innocent I at the beginning of the 5th century. Testifying to an already well-established practice which had evolved from the early years after the Lord's resurrection. And St. Basil speaks of Holy Sunday honored by the Lord's resurrection, the first fruits of all the other days. And St. Augustine calls Sunday a sacrament of Easter. And I know you know what Easter is, because you are waiting for it. According to the common witness of the Gospels, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead took place on the first day of the Sabbath, I'm sorry, the first day after the Sabbath, the resurrection, which is Sunday. Mark 16 to 9, Luke 24. On the same day, the risen Lord appeared to the two disciples of Emmaus, Luke 24, and to the eleven disciples gathered together, Luke 24. A week later, as the Gospel of John recounts, John 20, the disciples were gathered together once again when Jesus appeared to them and made himself known to Thomas, Thomas, I'm sorry, by showing him the signs of his passion, the day of Pentecost, the first day of the eighth week after the Jewish Passover, Acts 2, when the promise made by Jesus to the disciples after the resurrection was fulfilled by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, also fell on Sunday. This was the day of the first proclamation and the first baptism. Peter announced to the assembled crowd that Christ was risen and those who received his word were baptized. This was the epiphany of the church, revealed as the people into which are gathered in unity, beyond all the differences, the scattered children of God, as we say in one of the Eucharistic prayers. I don't remember how it goes now, but it's a beautiful prayer. All these children gather here together or something like that. It was for this reason that from apostolic times, the first day after the Sabbath, the first day of the week, began to shape the rhythm of life for Christ's disciples, 1 Corinthians. The first day after the Sabbath was also the day upon which the faithful of Troas were gathered for the breaking of the bread, which Paul bedeth them farewell and miraculously restored the young Eutychus to life. It is also a day of new creation. This link invites an understanding of the resurrection of the beginning of a new creation, the first fruits of which is the glorious Christ, the firstborn of all creation, and the firstborn from the dead. Now these are the, these are the little bit more deeper meaning of, of Sunday. What is Sunday? It's a day of Lord's resurrection. 
but it's also a day of new creation and we are the new creation the people born of Christ of baptism of Christ are called a new creation not newborn but new creation I will give you new hearts right I'll take your stony hearts and give you new hearts this is also a day of Christ sorry new creation light Christ light Christ is the light of the world John 9 and in the weekly reckoning of time the day commemorating his resurrection is the enduring reflection of the epiphany of his glory six days you work and you are caught up in all kinds of activities and you go you make time make the sacrifice to get up on Sunday and go and to refocus your life on what is really important on the spiritual on your God on what you're supposed to be seeking in your life therefore it cannot be dismissed it's the day of the Holy Spirit when he appeared to the Apostles of the evening of Easter Jesus breathed upon them and said receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven if you remain retain the sins of any they are retained the outpouring of the Spirit was the great gift of the risen Lord to his disciples on Easter Sunday Sunday and what is now Sunday in the time of industrialization in the modern time I think you can agree or you may agree or disagree um, that we live in time of the cult of work there is nothing feministic there <laughs> cult of work right men subject to work men is the object of work we diminish the dignity of men you work you're a man you don't you're not but rest was divinely instituted we have to go beyond that understand that we are so cut up into providing our income that we forget what we really are here for and that it's temporary not forever we cannot build this world and sustain it by ourselves because that goes back to the Tower of Babel it will all be destroyed we will be humiliated and humbled and we'll have to start all over again and again and again it's been happening throughout the centuries God's action and the model for human action already said that now there is another thing that really doesn't help in celebration of Sunday especially in the United States of America right sports restaurants going visiting traveling visiting families and long distances this is very well planned right months ahead months before we have to get to that game we have to see this family oh father it was a family celebration oh father it was a wedding oh father it was this and that don't father me <laughs> you answer to God himself okay I mean it's like playing a game we are if we are adults we respect authorities and God-given laws and we plan first to get to mass when I go somewhere I will check where there is a church and I will check what time is mass otherwise I don't call myself a Catholic I don't sports athletic events and that talks about in this oops not yet <laughs> Athletic events for young people have sometimes interfered with the Sunday Mass observance of Catholic youth it's documents of the church until recently Sunday morning was a sacred time in most communities Where is the sacred time sign? <laughs> there it is <laughs> It was a sacred time in most communities and neighborhoods set aside for church attendance before this is abandoned on behalf of sport activities or other unexpected intru intrusions 
It is hoped that Catholic communities will prevail on sponsors of athletic events to adapt their programs to the religious needs of our youth. Don't we fight all the time for our children to become what we want them to become, right? To be religious so they can be protected from the craziness of the world out there? So they know God and know the direction they're supposed to go, so they have a point of reference that is different than MTV or maybe other Viva and other channels? And their idols. That's what it is all about. We build a ground for the future. On Sunday, we can also seek out forms of culture and entertainment. The enhance of spirit. Way! There it is. I have to go back to it. I shop, therefore I am. This is a big thing. Um, Sunday shopping, apparently. Um, but Sunday was not made for shopping. And we go and shop on Sunday, we make, we make these people work on Sunday. We help that whole industry. We do it. If we don't go, stores are not open. Do we really need them? Do we really need to? And we have stores open 24 7 grocery stores, everything, 24-7 seven days a week. Do we really have to go on Sunday? Holy day. Make this day holy, says the Lord. I guess. I need to buy more. I have not enough time. I don't have enough time during the whole week to buy things. Sunday is also a day to enjoy cultural events because talent comes from God. We can appreciate it. We are called to appreciate it. <laughs> talent. <laughs> our hope. Well, that's not our hope. <laughs> that's the culture. <laughs> there are still more that's interesting. There are still more Catholics at Mass on a single weekend than the fans that go to Major League Baseball games in entire season. Did you know? Yeah. Let me repeat that. There are still more Catholics at Mass on a single weekend than the fans that go to Major League Baseball games in an entire season. Yeah, I know. That sounds like it's awesome and cool, <laughs> but it could be better, right? We still go. St. Joseph's Church packed <laughs> sometimes. Now, I wanted to give you some practical points. Some practical points to keep in mind before you go to Mass, so you can more fully participate in the greatest prayer of the Church. And I think, I mean, I learned, I mean, I knew some of these things because I went through you know, so many years of seminary, but I think it's very important, especially for you who are new coming to the church and will be discovering the beauty of Mass and sometimes you will get bored. Yeah, just ask your Catholic friends who have been born Catholics and been going to Mass all the time, especially our youngsters. Ask them how excited sometimes they are. Well, I'll try to prevent it. Go to Mass with the intention to worship. Make an intention. I would even require, uh, advise you to write down these points. I'm, I, I can just give it to you. Make an intention. Okay? When you go to movie theater, you make an intention that you're going to be attentive, right? You're going to try to, or when you go to a presentation, you have an intention to learn something. You go to class, I don't know how it is. A, Mercer or Mount the Cells, the students make intentions to learn something or not. Um, but they have to go still, right? Sometimes they don't have intention. They, the intention is to take a nap, like sometimes, you know, <laughs> happens even here. Um, but the intention is to worship God. I go there not because it's my obligation, not because my mama or my daddy is telling me, or my wife or my husband. No, it's my personal obligation, and I want to worship God because I grow closer to Him. Be vocal. Sing the hymns and respond to the prayers so they can work in you. 
utter the holy words. How often do you do that during the week? You are saying holy words that go back 2,000 years and come from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself, your God. You're repeating these things. They must have effect on you if you say it. If you don't, no effect. Make an intention for each Mass. Don't go there and presume there is intention and the, pr the priest is praying for something, right? I always have an intention that I have to, someone requested an intention and I offer the sacrifice of Mass. But you are supposed to be joining me with your own intentions. If you go to Mass, then pray for something. Maybe you know someone. Maybe your family needs prayers. Maybe you know someone who is addicted and no one prays for him. Drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever. Every single time you go to Mass, you should make an intention and offer it when the priest is elevating the body of Christ. This is the best moment to introduce the intention and to acknowledge God's presence. You cannot get any closer unless you go to communion, obviously. But then you offer the communion too for some kind of an intention. And if you don't go to communion because you have a grave sin, then offer a spiritual communion for that intention. Sometimes it may be even more powerful, the longing of your heart, than actual receiving communion without even acknowledging God, which happens. Read and pray over the scripture reading for the given day or Sunday beforehand. Obviously, we have to do it. I mean, priests, we prepare homilies. So you have to study, but for you too. Imagine that you are a priest and you are going to preach at this Mass. Read the Gospel and then compare with what the priest said. Huh? Where did he get that from? Which reading? <laughs> Remember that I can choose only one word one word from a song, for example, and build up my whole homily on this one word. And you will not know. But if you ask me, was it in the readings? Oh yeah, it was. Which word? This one. <laughs> the comma to slow down <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> to stop for a minute right acknowledge God so do that why not it's a good exercise read the scripture and says huh what does it say what if I were to preach what would I preach about and then after a few months you realize it's not that easy because you your ideas will repeat over and over you be like, wow, how can you preach all the time and come up with new things? Exactly. It's difficult. <laughs> study Mass. Study Mass. Constantly. Read about Mass. Don't just think that you know everything because you went through RCIA and they explained to you the sign of the cross, the greeting, the creed, the sanctus, and everything that is going on, that the, the host is becoming the body of Christ. Right. But we have so many spiritual writers who take so many different positions and so many different interpretations. You can grow so rich in it. And when you go to Mass, I mean, you will live it through every single time you go. Every single time I celebrate Mass with incense, I go back to Old Testament with my thoughts. When the priest, the high priest, when the priests were ministering in the temple, incensing the sacrifice, walking around, offering the sacrifice, gathering the prayers of the people. That's what we do. That's the new priesthood of the high priest, Jesus Christ, that we enter into. What about you, the faithful, standing outside of the temple, waiting for the priest to get out and take your sacrifice and offer it for you? What are you doing there? You have to be studying about Mass so you don't stand there like, columns and just be because that is the most frustrating and sad thing ever for me imagine how it upsets God it must because you go there to worship and give witness so be open to the community of people Ooh, that's to study that's the source <laughs> the catechism of the Catholic Church have you seen it before? I hope. There it is. <laughs> Community of people. 
Be open. Don't think that you're going to church and you have your little one pew reserved there and you're not going to turn around. You're not going to say hi to anyone. It's a community of people. We interact. When we go to church, we set our mind on we will be meeting other people. We will be trying to be open to them, say something, welcome them if you see they are new, all that stuff. Be community oriented when you go to Mass. Because it's not for one person. Otherwise it would be a prayer, not worship. Be ready to receive communion. Do everything in your power to go to confession if you have a moral sin. To talk to a priest if you have doubts. If you should receive communion or you shouldn't receive communion, communion is there for you to change your life. Because when you respect it, you will change your life in order to receive it. If you don't respect it or you don't believe in the true presence, or you just think it's for everyone, that you will not change anything. You will just approach like a zombie and walk away. But communion is meant for us to elevate us up higher to change our life through the way we change our life to receive it. So, <laughs> what is your Sunday like? Tell me now, every single one of you. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Right here. Any questions? No? Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> Any questions? Really? I will try to answer. Um, okay, I should have mentioned that. Well, first of all, if they have exhausted every single possibility of attending Mass, well, they can simply take the, separate an hour, whenever, either on Saturday or better on Sunday, separate an hour of a time to be alone, read the scriptures, read through Mass on, them, on, on their own, meditate upon the scripture and spend an hour in prayer, as if they were in church, but they just couldn't go to Mass. Could they take a Mass of, uh, like a Monday or a Friday? We cannot substitute Sunday Mass for a daily Mass. I know that, but they're doing, they're doing readings you know, during oh. Sunday. Perhaps they could go ahead and do a Mass during the week so that they get that grace. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, but yeah, we have to be very specific. I mean, it's, it still doesn't fulfill the obligation of Sunday Mass, but obviously it's encouraged to go to Mass, you know, on, on, other, yeah, on, on a Monday, Tuesday, or whatever other day. What is it? Oh, the TV Mass? <laughs> Um, well, you could do it. That would be, that would be I mean, not instead of going to Mass, but exactly instead of doing it on your own, you could follow it on TV, right? My grandmother used to do it all the time. She couldn't go to Mass. I was there sitting next to her after coming f from church and I really didn't want to watch it. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> yes. Uh, those uh, verses, they're for instance 12 down to 7, right? 7 o'clock or 7 o'clock or is it 11 to 11? 6.45 to 7.15 or 7.15. Yeah, you see... I mean, like, you got the night when you come around and you catch the first thing in the morning, man, or you got the day when you catch one in between there or something like that. I mean, well, as I, as I said, if you have exhausted every, every possibility of attending Mass, it's on your conscience, you know if you have or not. No one's going to go there at this police officer and check you. Um, but yeah, some churches have Masses late, like 9 o'clock p.m. on Sunday so that everyone can get to Mass. We don't have it. I mean, because we have Saturday Mass. In Poland, Mass would be even at 9.25 p.m. because some people couldn't make it. But they were, there was no Mass on Saturday, so... You know, obviously I cannot tell anyone that, you know, you have a... Um, grave sin because you couldn't get to Mass. Doesn't make any sense. 
but you you're responsible for making you know the effort any effort possible and that's why with traveling it's so important I tell you know sometimes um, high schoolers they ask me they go on trip or people who go to different countries right there is no Catholic Church there well then you have to replace it with something either you know listen or read um, but when you travel the first thing you do you check the church if there is a church around Yeah, my mother went to England last year and she just, she went to Anglican church all the time. She had no idea. <laughs> she said to me, I liked it so much. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> is, is vigil mass based on what time zone you're in? I mean, I, I know that sounds particular, but I was looking, we're going to Las Vegas in a few weeks. And we were going to be there and needed to go to Mass. And I was looking, and one of the, um, and it's the cathedral, I think, in Las Vegas, said that I think they have a 2.30 vigil Mass. It said 2.30 Mass, and it was like in... Yeah, it should be after 4 o'clock. In, in that time zone, right? I mean, there's not like some central time zone. Yeah, in that, in the particular time zone, it should be after 4 p.m. Um, that's why we can't, that's why we don't, we shouldn't be doing, you know, funerals after four o'clock after vigil mass because it's practically Sunday after this vigil time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, I noticed on one of your slides uh, there was a, a picture of a, a symphony orchestra. Right. And you made the comment that I got the feeling you were saying you go to mass on Sunday morning it's okay to go to the symphony in the afternoon or evening of Sunday because you're in, enjoying God's creation of the music and so forth. Is that correct? Yes. Well, then, what if, uh, could you apply the same thought to the, the God-created talent that Tim Tebow has? <laughs> I knew from the beginning what you were getting into. That is not the problem. The problem is, is how important sport have become. No, I understand. I, That's the I'm problem. Person, yeah. But you have to admit, yeah. he's oh, got yeah. some God-given talents. <laughs> of course. I, I don't deny that. Yes. But it, it was, first of all, uh, these two examples were in two different instances. One was, one was um, in talking about how we replace mass with something. I was talking about how morning, morning, Sunday morning used to be known for um, everyone going to church. And these days, the coaches, the sponsors don't respect this time anymore. They have their sport activities and, on Sunday mornings, and these children have to go there. And there is a problem created. Yes? Yeah, but if you catch a mass like an early mass, like at 9.30, you're still... You're what does it mean to catch mass? <laughs> yeah, let's have a little fight here. <laughs> well, that's that's my point. Catch mass. <laughs> yeah, but that is all fine. Is no, no, no. Let's just let's just because I don't want to go through this again. We make the day holy, right? Okay, there is a little difference. I'm not going to go into the details I mean, you will disagree with me or not. But there is a little difference of going to a symphony, right? And enjoying the time. And I bet you, you will contemplate God a little bit faster than when you go to a, gra a game where everybody's loud. Okay? That's a little bit, little difference. I'm not saying that uh, football players, baseball players, they don't have a ta God-given talent. They do. And we appreciate it. I'm talking about our youth becoming so caught up into sports that church is put many places aside, far away from the first one, far away. And it's because schools are putting so much emphasis on sports. They are. And how many of them will be professional athletes? Exactly. But they will be making decisions that will influence their whole life according to what? How they throw the ball or how they pray. That's my problem and my point. Professional sports is probably the prime symbol of greed and conspicuous consumption in this country. It's a bit different from going to a symphony. 
I mean, those pro football, you, you're supporting servile labor. These guys make millions of dollars a year, and they got through college, they can't even write their name. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we, I am not against going to sport events. I go to mount their sales, you know, most of the games that they do. But have I told them what I think about it sometimes when I was preaching? Yes. Did I see a problem with how many hours they have to spend these kids over there? I don't want to compare, but, you know, when I went to high school, the first thing we were doing was studying. Studying not playing sports. Twice a week we had sport activities at school. And now when you apply to school, the first thing you look at is sports. I just, I don't think it's a proper balance, but it's, that's not a topic for today, right? <laughs> you see, that just shows how sports are important. <laughs> That was the point. Well, that was the point. Yeah, you know we call we call this it's a Sabbath day, and you want to go and see the the Jewish laws for Sunday, what they could for Saturday, what they could do for the Sabbath, and we're supposed to be making the day holy, and it it goes to studying, it goes to everything, you know it's you have to make priorities. Do I really have to do it on Sunday? Do I really have to do it? Otherwise, do something that will give glory to God. I had something else, but what's up? <laughs> okay, um, I got, I got two questions. One, it's going to be a really big lifestyle change for me. I'm going to get a step. My arms, my arms are going to get upset. Let me ask my other question. <clears throat> um, my other question is, why are we doing our thing on Easter Vigil then? Our big joining the church is well, that's how, that's how it is in the tradition of the church. That's how it's been done. I don't really know the specifics of it, but that's how it's done so here. If, if we do that, I mean, that's a very long ceremony, right? Like that, Jerry, you want to... Does that cover? I mean, I don't mean to be, you know... Like, but Easter like, Vigil, mass, Easter, I mean, vigil, vigil Mass is Sunday Mass. There is no problem here. And Vigil Mass, Easter Vigil is, is Easter. It's, it's a vigil of the day. Let's see the second question. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm Are you ready? So, okay, we got the four o'clock Saturday thing. Four thirty. Is is it is it wrong and manipulative of me if I were to look at my Sabbath as being from four to four, four o'clock Saturday, four o'clock Sunday? I'm a teacher and my kids are students. And I think you can answer this question for yourself. You use the word. What? Um, I mean, is it manipulating? Is, it, what do you think? Next question. I know. I think everyone can answer the question. Not just to uh, 
Catch a mass? Catch a cold. If you're having your mind right about mass and God and everything, go on Sunday mornings. Is it wrong to do something like go to a football game in the afternoon? No, no, no. Okay, that's No, no, not at all. I, I, if, if, if that's what you understood, that's not what I said. No, no, I know you didn't say it, but it was just not clear in my mind. Mm -mm -mm. I wanted to make sure. No. That's why I made the comparison of the orchestra. That is a social event. Um, no, no, no. It's that was a deeper problem. It was about the morning and children, all that stuff. Um, replacing mass with something else, or because I have to do it, or because I will catch a Sunday because it's my obligation. Catch a Sunday. I will catch a Sunday because. Thank you for that one. Because it's my obligation, but it talks about making the day holy, the whole day holy. And it's a difficult thing to do. That's why we learn how to do it. We slowly sacrifice things, put them aside, organize our week in a different way so we can actually enjoy this day. Sometimes it becomes it's a lazy day. It becomes sometimes for children especially a boring day. It's because they don't know how to celebrate or we don't know how to actually use this day for our spiritual good. But it does. I mean, I remember myself. Sitting there on Sunday, there was nothing to do. Everything was cooked on Saturday. My mother would just hit it up on Sunday. Nothing was done. So she's just sitting there. Yeah, watch TV. I'll go to talk to my mother. It was, just, it was boring because we didn't know what to do. We should have. Yes? Anyone else? This is it. 8 o'clock? Done. <laughs> we are closing. Rest of the questions, you know, after the presentation. Okay? <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.